today we're going to be going over the best cavalry equipment in rise of kingdoms as well as the best order with which you can be upgrading these pieces and then later in the video we'll talk about some of the priority pieces for iconic upgrades as well as the best accessories for cavalry so in this video we're going to cover everything this is the third video in my equipment guide series i recently did a guide for archers and for infantry they will probably be linked down below in the description so if you miss those definitely take a look at those as well as i do sprinkle in a couple of tips here and there so you may still find some useful information in those videos if you enjoy these types of guide videos make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it puts this video out into the algorithm and tells me that you want me to make more guide videos like this and i also want to give a quick shout out to my second channel link will be down below that's more of a commentary channel where i talk about things other than rise of kingdoms we discuss gaming tech news and social media news basically and a lot of you guys probably don't know that that channel exists okay without further ado what's going on guys cheers i've gotten a lot of comments from the cav gang on my last two videos in this series on the archer and infantry video so i know you guys have been looking forward to this video for a while and hopefully you can learn something new here as you can see on the screen here of course this is kind of the first set that you're going to be going for for cavalry of course as i mentioned in my previous videos with different equipments you do want to just make sure that you get something in each slot okay and one quick thing that i want to point out that i should have pointed out in my archer guide is that that extends to the accessory slots as well so if you don't have literally any accessory to put in those slots you can resort to things like call of the loyal it's just generic march speed that you can slap on an army and this is especially true for infantry and archers it's a little bit less true for cavalry because they do tend to be a little bit faster overall in terms of the stats that they usually get from their commanders and from their talent trees some of them are mobility which shouldn't be primary anyway but you get the point and also cavalry have a higher base movement speed in general so just they're always typically going to be a little bit faster but just keep in mind throughout this series something in every slot is important so if that means getting gray pieces and things like that then just throw something in there just to get those stat points and you can always break those pieces down to get full refunds on the materials that you use not the blueprints or gold or anything like that but at least you get the materials back so you can use that to upgrade the next piece anyway eventually this is going to be the set that you want to aim for at the start of the game and this has two green pieces this is actually a two-piece vanguard set which is extremely valuable for cavalry especially in the early game you also have three of the windswept pieces the chest the gloves and the boots and then you have the expedition warhelm which gives you a nice amount of cavalry defense and honestly for a starter build with special talents this gives you an insane amount of stats with a really respectable distribution of these stats you have nine and a half percent attack 20 and a half percent defense and 14 percent health you get a ridiculous amount of stats for all green and blue pieces very impressive stuff you get five percent defense and four percent health from the weapon alone so nine percent of tanky stats then you get four percent attack and one percent health from the legs here and that gives you a two piece set bonus of another two percent cavalry attack overall incredible stuff here and of course with the three pieces of the windswept set this is going to give you that two piece set bonus which is going to give you a little bit more attack as well as all the march speed that you are going to get from this three piece set as well the gloves and the boots both give you a little bit of cavalry health whereas as the chest piece gives you some cavalry defense and then we move on to the expedition war helm this is a blue piece the helmet piece which gives you six percent cav defense but with a talent is eight percent cavalry defense and honestly this is one of the better blue pieces in the entire game this is almost not quite but almost on par with the basically a cavalry version of infantry's gatekeeper shield i think gatekeeper shield is obviously better because it's a weapon which means it gives more stats and its health but this is almost on par with the gatekeeper keeper shield you're going to be using this blue helmet for a very long time so you get a lot of value here from here the first piece that I would look at upgrading would be the chest piece and that's because you want to go for the dark Lord's blessing with the special talent you can see that brings your overall defense up to 25 percent so overall just a straight improvement over the piece that we had before and you still have the two piece windswept set bonus which is really nice however as you start to enter into the mid and even the late game the windswept set really starts to be less valuable because even though both of these give you a little bit of cavalry health and the march speed is nice the march speed actually isn't as important on the calves as it is for other troop types especially like infantry for example we talked about the windswept set and that's of course because cavalry already have a high movement speed and there's also typically a decent amount of movement speed in their skills for the commanders as well and so eventually you will want to put the cloud racers boots and the isset's sufferance gloves onto your build here i would say the gloves probably take priority here because they do give you a nice distribution of both attack and health for 
for cavalry but either way once you remove either the gloves or the boots you also lose the two-piece set bonus for the windswept set and so eventually you'll want to make that replacement pretty much at the same time and you'll notice that we lost three percent of health but we gained like 10 percent attack and that's definitely a trade-off that i'm okay with making especially given the fact that you still have a ton of tanky stats with the defense here and as you'll see in just a minute you're going to get a lot of health in the end game for cavalry so you don't have to worry too much about that from here you will look to replace your green pieces the legs are probably the place to start because the gladiator purple legs give you cavalry health you get 10 and a half percent cav health this is basically like karak's humility for infantry but it's cavalry's version which is really nice this is a great budget value piece here which we love to see and then eventually you will replace the weapon and it's honestly insane how long this weapon is relevant for because it does give you 12 percent of tanky stats but heart of the saint does give you 17 percent tanky stats it is more skewed towards defense but regardless you will prefer this as an overall build and here we can see the breakdown is 11 and a half percent attack 35.5 percent defense and 14 and a half percent health overall great distribution still tons of defense here and so next we're going to work on getting a little bit more health on this build and the first thing that's going to go is probably going to be the boots here because the boots of the hellish wasteland for cavalry is part of the cavalry set and so assuming that you don't get the special talent here on your first craft you'll be trading off seven and a half percent cav attack for seven and a half percent cavalry health which is a great trade-off i would definitely take that every day of the week and as as your first legendary piece you can put an iconic crystal into this piece because it is boots and boots do give you health which is really really valuable from here you can look to replacing the dark lord's blessing with the chess piece of the hellish wasteland this is again the legendary cavalry set piece this also replaces the defense with the health and with just those two replacements the chest and the boots we've gone down to four percent attack 25% defense and 36% health. This is such a good place to be at for cavalry, especially considering you still have a blue piece, which is beautiful. Another thing worth mentioning here is that with that chest piece being part of the cavalry set, you now have a two piece set bonus, which surprise, surprise is 3% troop health. So cavalry really are blessed here with their set pieces and overall just their end game build is super, super good. Now, the other thing is you can put an iconic crystal in that chest piece. That's going to give you three points towards your defense your base defense now these two pieces were massive upgrades in terms of stat distribution everything else that you upgrade here is going to be much smaller improvements but i think you could argue that the gloves would be the next best thing to upgrade because navarre's control is super good when it comes to exchanging the attack and health split from Isset Sufferance and converting that into just cavalry health. And you can get this from the crystal keys. You can get this for free eventually. And honestly, if you don't have any blueprints of these pieces yet, then this could be a nice first place to start if you have to. And also when you put an iconic crystal here, you get three base attack points for cavalry, which honestly base attack points aren't that bad. I mean, they scale really nicely with crystal tech. If you do get a lot of crystal tech in the end game. So that's pretty nice. The next piece that I would look to upgrade would be the helmet here. And if we're talking about the best in slot helmet in the end game, that's going to be pride of the con. This is actually a KVK piece. So this is going to come from the KVK shop. It's going to cost you two conquest coins. And now that there has been an upgrade to the conquest shop, you can get up to two of these every single KVK and there's more conquest coins to be gained. The KVK pieces, as I've mentioned in previous equipment guides do cost more to go through through the iconic upgrade system in terms of materials, but their initial craft is it's the same amount of legendary materials as the set piece it just costs 10 million more gold and it's different quantities of specific materials but in total it's the same amount of legendary materials so it costs the same amount to craft as the set helmet but it gives you more stats and again it will cost more to go through the iconic tier system but at just point for point it's going to be better this is going to get you 15 percent cavalry defense which is insane that's going to be almost double what you got from the blue helmet so no matter how you cut it this is a straight upgrade and you can put another iconic crystal here and now you're popping off you can see the stat breakdown is 32 percent defense and 40 percent health i mean cavalry have it so good when it comes to equipment it's actually insane now maybe i should have mentioned this earlier but again you should have probably some purple things in the accessory slots i would say before you even get pride of the con and probably before you even get navar's control gloves you probably want to at least have purples in the accessory slots i prefer ancient stratagems because it gives you more troops which is just straight up more damage and also silent trial is a really nice rate 
rage debuff on a single target with especially with a talent 13 rage per turn is really really good from here though you can decide do you want to upgrade the weapon or do you want to upgrade your accessories i know a lot of end game whales like to say that you need like a full set of legendary equipment before you start looking at legendary accessories i don't tend to like fully agree with that i think that for example replacing you know this is the gladiator legs like replacing these with the legendary legs is really such a minor improvement compared to putting some legendary accessories on this set it's honestly night and day i would probably rather go for the legendary accessories at this point and again just like we talked about in the archer video i'm going to point you guys towards the ring and the horn and this is because well of course the horn gives you bonus rage and that is i mean you want to pop your active skills as often and as frequently as possible yes you might over rage with this but still the point is to just straight up have the highest probability of casting before your opponent and so that's why this is such a valuable piece and also of course ring of doom is sort of a no-brainer it is just straight up damage just flat damage across the board we love to see that and you also can put an iconic crystal into both of these these are high 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 priority for iconic crystals so now you have nine base stats for your health here for cavalry which is beautiful actually six of that is universal because the accessories you can move to anyone and then from here i would look at replacing your weapon with the kvk weapon this is the sacred dominion this does give you a ridiculous amount of cavalry attack which means you are going to be hitting super hard now the best part about this is you lose defense for it instead of the health so you still keep a staggering 40 percent cavalry health with this build while still getting a nice punch from just the weapon replacement alone we love to see that you also can put an iconic crystal here and now all that's left to do is replace the legs and the beauty for cavalry is that the crystal keys will eventually bless you with ash of the dawn and the fact that this is the last piece that you have to replace is super nice because that just gives you literally like over a year's worth of opening crystal keys and hopefully you'll get this at some point you can use the gladiator which is the purple legs you can use this well into the end game ash of the dawn is 1.5 percent more cavalry health so it is a very minor upgrade getting ash of the dawn which is why this is the last piece that i recommend players go for when it comes to cavalry these days but you also do get some base health there which is nice and so this would be your ending lineup here for cavalry we have 25 percent attack 15 percent defense and 41.5 percent health so just remember every time a cavalry player complains about nevsky joan being old despite still being one of the best armies in the game by the way they have it very easy and straightforward from an equipment perspective okay two of their best pieces are literally crystal key pieces that give you a tremendous amount of health they also get health from a two-piece set bonus here and both pieces also give them health okay so this is such a good build it is great for the end game and from here you might ask yourself well okay what should i do to progress through the iconic system now if you watched my videos talking about infantry and archers you know that i told players to focus on your boots that should be your first iconic upgrade and it depends on how you feel for cavalry now for the reason that boots i would say are so important for infantry and archers is because the iconic four and five for boots give you bonus march speed which archers desperately need and infantry really need as well especially depending on the pairing anything with gorgo for example you need as much march speed as possible probably when william wallace comes out we might not see as much gorgo in the field anymore but regardless if you want your cavalry to be the fastest thing on the field and then you can prioritize the boots here but honestly i don't think that's the best place to start for cavalry i would argue that the best place to start would be on the weapon and the helmet because the kvk pieces while it is a little bit more expensive to go through the iconic tier system you are going to be able to get these blueprints as you go through kvks you can get your hands on a couple of them and point for point you're just going to get more value out of these upgrades compared to let's say the set pieces or the crystal key pieces themselves for example the sacred dominion is going to ignore the enemy defense give you a little bit more troops for the battlefield and three percent more damage to troops on the map that is literally three percent all damage which is insane furious strike of course also giving you bonus damage as well with a five second cooldown the helmet being a little bit less impressive than the sacred dominion giving you less troops but still more have attack bonus damage on the map and shattering strike which gives you more skill damage which as we've learned if you guys watched the infantry video whether that is 
skill damage or smite damage this is going to apply there now at the time of recording this there are no smite damage cavalry commanders and it doesn't look like there's going to be honestly if i'm if i'm just being a if i'm predicting the future i don't know if they're actually going to ever do smite damage calves but it's worth noting that if they do this upgrade will still apply to them which is really nice but point for point i would say the weapon is priority then the helmet would be next from there your next iconic upgrades should probably be either the legs or the chest piece now the benefit of the leg iconic upgrades and i guess also by extension the gloves is that as you just get these pieces through crystal keys you can use them to go through the iconic tier system that's just probably how that's going to go of course there are other places to get these if you are focusing exclusively on cavalry at the moment but if you have to choose between a chess piece blueprint get like let's say from an event or something chess piece versus boots i would say it depends on what you value more do you value the ignoring enemy health from the chess piece iconics as you can see here plus damage to troops on the map or do you eventually value the march speed more and honestly for cavalry i would say the the chest piece is a better iconic upgrade than the boots it is also worth noting that March speed I'm never going to turn down March speed okay March speed is great ultimately gloves are probably the least exciting of the iconic upgrades here but again as you're going to be getting these blueprints over time through the crystal keys very slowly most likely but you will get them eventually that will eventually be upgraded as well now it is worth noting that like iconic five for some of these pieces isn't that exciting right like the gloves for example gives a very small March speed reduction for when you deal skill or smite damage the bonus March speed outside of alliance territory for cavalry is even less valuable than it is for other troop types but for cavalry that already have a lot of march speed like iconic five is really expensive here so for some of these pieces like if you wanted to start working on the you know special talents when you get to let's say iconic four then that might be something worth exploring but eventually once you get to that point you're super end game and you're going to be working towards getting everything here with a special talent and that's going to leave you with your end game build of 32 and a half percent cav attack 19 and a half percent cav defense and 54 percent cavalry health which is actually unbelievable this is why i love huo so much right because he gives you so much attack and defense and the build that you're gonna have for him already has so much health as well this is the way to go now while i did say that cavalry have it easy building a really valuable set with an insane stat distribution and two crystal key pieces two kvk pieces the two piece set bonus being really valuable cavalry health like this is great the downside for cavalry is that they don't really have great alternative builds for a second cavalry set right so when we talked about infantry we talked about a couple of different things that you could change that might make a second infantry set be really easy to build such as swapping the kvk pieces for set pieces and then swapping the legs and boots for like the leadership set or using shio's return and the sacred grips to make your whole set a little bit easier to build or in the case of archers you could use like the milky way chess piece and again using or incorporating some of the leadership set or maybe using the kvk pieces versus not there are some ways that you can kind of extend a little bit past the the borders of you know this is meta and you can make something meta adjacent with out competing for blueprints between two different sets with cavalry they don't really have a great second option right because yes you can use the set piece helmet and weapon here for a four piece set bonus which gives you a little bit of extra counter attack damage not that beneficial to be honest with you but you could do this for your second cavalry set so that way you don't have a competing helmet and weapon for iconic upgrades and special talent upgrades however every other slot here can't really be you can't afford to really replace it right because all of these are giving you cavalry health and it's giving you more cavalry health than any other competing piece right you can't replace the gloves with you know leadership gloves you can't replace the gloves with the set piece gloves because they're just straight up worse they're not even kind of close it's just it's not adjacent right it is just a worse piece same thing with the shadow legions retribution or whatever this is called oh wow i was actually right this gives you cavalry attack right which you know i mean cav attack isn't bad but it is just worse than the cav health from the set piece so really you are there's really no way around it you're gonna have four competing blueprint slots between your two cavalry sets that's just how it's gonna go unfortunately and it is what it is now just as a final point here i'm gonna touch on the concealed dagger and mora's web honestly i wouldn't recommend crafting these pieces for cavalry specifically if you're gonna craft the concealed dagger it's probably gonna go on liu che because he just has a bonus chance of proccing it same thing with mora's web however 
if you do have these pieces or these accessories kind of laying around from maybe you crafted them in the past and you don't really know where to put them you can slap them on a cavalry march and they do tend to perform slightly better here than on other marches and the only reason for that is because cavalry tend to be faster than other troop types and so more than likely if you have like let's say you're running four or five armies more than likely the army that's going to stay connected to the target is going to be one of your cavalry armies because they are faster in the open field and staying connected to the target is going to apply these debuffs over time and so anybody else that's connected to that target probably other cavalry commanders are going to be benefiting from the debuffs from either the health or the defense and especially with more as web this does also slow down cavalry specifically and the troop type that is most likely going to be able to catch up to cavalry to slow them down is cavalry themselves so in this sort of world where you know you have to be connected to the target to get those debuffs off i could see a world where players who have these extra accessories lying around from back in the day maybe they slap them on their second or first maybe cavalry march to just ensure that they keep a target debuffed as it's running away that is what i'm going to say here but i do want to be very clear that the horn and ring are probably your better options just in general because they're going to give you extra rage and damage and your active skills for cavalry are where a majority of your damage comes from anyway so overall this this is going to be your best in slot final end game build for cavalry and it is quite a beautiful set indeed i really wish infantry had this much health on their final build that would be really nice lilith what are you doing give it to us please anyway guys unlike the archer video this is just straightforward we don't have to go through a five million spreadsheets to kind of look at the nuance between two different sets this is pretty much open and shut case best in slot for everything so hopefully you found this useful and if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video let me know in the comment section below what you think about this cavalry set do you prefer the four piece set bonus over the kvk pieces let me know in the comment section below i honestly think that again it's pretty much open and shut case in my mind but maybe i'm missing something you can let me know down there and for those of you that are commenting asking for a guide for let's say engineering i thought about it honestly there are some things that you could do for engineering as you're like progressing through your equipment but honestly siege units pretty much just have one set for their purple pieces and then another set for their legendary pieces now i know that like some of the gathering pieces give you some siege stats as well and you can use those to fill in the holes of your equipment build until you can get the respective purple or legendary piece for the siege but really it seems like siege just have like one kind of upgrade path there's really they don't really have that many other options whereas for the other troop types they have a crystal key set and they also have a kvk set or a set piece or something like that or they have various different purple and blue pieces that they can go for whereas with engineering and with siege kind of seems like one straightforward path that's kind of how it seems to me you can let me know though in the comment section below if you do want to see an engineering guide i will try to put something together although i will also shout out mr siege of course that is kind of like the number one place to go on youtube if you want engineering or ranged related content he is really about that life so there's really probably not much more that i could teach you that he hasn't already covered on his channel so you could definitely check him out if that's something that you're looking for but my advice is full set of knight's gear and then eventually full set of the wolf gear whatever that's called i find it hard to imagine that siege would deviate from that path very much because you know, like let's say you wanted to put some leadership gear in there it's hard to compete with the wolf set because it's level 50 so it literally gives more stats and i'm pretty sure every single slot gives you march speed yeah so like it's hard to compete with this set so yeah that's it's probably open and shut case but again check out mr siege if you want more nuanced information about that or maybe i can build a guide in the future if there really is a big demand for it anyway guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace